All right, so as the uh, introduction said, I'm here to talk about content advertisement mirroring. So this is a specific type of mirroring that mirrors the uh, content advertisements that are used in indexing. So let's talk about what that means. Uh, so refer, content advertisement mirroring refers to storing content uh, that advertises uh, all of the uh, multi-hash data that we index. So uh, multi-hash data uh, gets indexed when it is advertised um, by a, an advertisement publisher. They publish information that says, here's all the things that, that are available and go ahead and index it. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna collect that data and uh, be able to use it for later. And we're gonna be able to be collecting that in the special type of mirroring that is based on car files. But uh, we'll talk about that a bit later. First, uh, some background into this. So as you, many of you probably already know, the, the role of an indexer uh, lets content providers advertise where content's available from. And it lets retrieval clients search for this content by content ID. Um, in order to do this, indexers have to take in huge amounts of data from all of the publishers that are publishing the advertisement of the, the content. And um, the indexer takes this data, transforms it into uh, the indexes that allow the clients to do their lookup. So um, indexers can be deployed all over the world. Um, one of the reasons we might want to deploy them in different uh, places uh, is to be able to have uh, reasonable uh, local um, indexing available. So I might not be able to reach indexers in another country, but I can, if I have an indexer deployment in my country, then I can get to it relatively quickly. Uh, my clients can learn where content is. Um, but in having multiple deployments, what that means is each of these deploy indexer deployments is going to have to be able to pull in all of this data uh, redundantly from all of the different uh, publishers. So one deployment pulls everything in from all of the publishers in the world. Um, uh, and as does uh, any other installation. So this can actually uh, be quite expensive to do. So if I have an installation, uh, it's been running for, for months and I want to start up another indexer installation, <clears throat> it has to pull in all of the, the data uh, again, um, or maybe we have to have some sort of a way of transferring the data to the that we've already pulled into the new indexer, uh, the new indexer installation. Um, because otherwise processing initial and all this initial processing can take up to weeks to get caught up. Um, so the primary job of an indexer is to be able to answer uh, queries um, about where data is located. Uh, since indexers are consuming all of this content uh, from all these publishers, they can actually play a secondary role and that's to act as a concentrator of all this information. So all of the information is spread out amongst publishers all over the world. If the indexers uh, or an indexer installation is pulling this in, uh, being able to concentrate this information in one place is actually quite useful. Um, one of the more obvious uses is to uh, be able to use that to bootstrap a new indexer installation. And uh, what that uh, means is that we can now, instead of having to pull information from all of the different uh, publishers to get caught up, we can then take it in uh, a bulk transfer from an indexer that's already caught up and uh, transfer that data to the new installation and being able to bootstrap it that way. Um, so this, this way you can use whatever is the least expensive means of bulk data transfer. That may depend on, on your infrastructure, whether it's a, a, an S3 sync or transferring a, a truck full of uh, optical media, but uh, whatever is least expensive, is probably going to be a lot faster and, and less expensive than having to uh, take the weeks that it would uh, take to pull everything in from all of the publishers of, of content advertisement data. Um, so why is this useful? Um, well, uh, some of the reasons you already stated, but uh, uh, it's re useful for reducing the workload pay, uh, that's placed on the advertisement publishers. Uh, all of the publishers, they don't get any sort of compensation for advertising their content. They they advertise it because they want clients to be aware of of what of where content's available. Uh, so if a lot of indexers are hitting all of the uh, publishers for data repeatedly, this is this can be quite a burden on them. So this helps them out a lot with uh, not burdening them. 
uh, reduces the bandwidth cost uh, within an indexer deployment. Um, if you have redundant indexers and they're indexing the, the same content or ingesting the same content, uh, you can use a, a mirror to not have to re-ingest the same content. Uh, reduce the time to bring new indexers up. Um, that's what we already talked about. And uh, making content, uh, uh, advertisement uh, content uh, available to other indexer deployments. And this is something we'll talk about more, but uh, being able, uh, can we share this not just with our own deployments, but with the world and allow them to bring up indexers, uh, allow any party to bring up indexers uh, more easily. Uh, so as far as uh, talking about why it's useful for bringing indexers up quickly, it's much faster. So um, how much faster? Uh, we, we're seeing anywhere from uh, four times to 20 times faster. Uh, and that's just for the data transfer alone. So in other words, when an indexer uses a mirror, it's able to uh, pull in the data directly from the, the uh, advertise, content advertisement data directly from a mirror, uh, as opposed to from all the original publishers. So that's much faster because assuming that the mirror is reasonably fast and, and network local to the indexers that are pulling the data in. But it's additionally faster because you don't get interruptions in the data stream. Um, we've seen that a number of content uh, advertisement publishers they seem they tend to rate limit their data, um, or there's uh, network instabilities, and that can cause a lot of restarts. Maybe you only get 50 to 100 advertisements at a time on a chain that might be 100,000 or even a few million advertisements long, and each advertisement can have its own chain of data associated with it. So that could take huge amounts of time if there's any sort of interruptions in the data stream a mirror eliminates those because now you're transferring from something local to you and you don't have any uh, external limitations applied. Um, so given the amount of speed up, um, a month to a week at, uh, at an average of four times speed up, that's pretty significant. Um, so we've already mentioned the, some of the additional benefits, uh, less expensive um, than you, depending on your external bandwidth costs, uh, you can have an internal transfer uh, from a bulk from bulk data. Um, less burden on the publishers. Uh, um, useful for bootstrapping installations. And the last point is a more important one that we'll talk about is it's an alternate source of content advertisement data if shared to the public. And that's something that we don't have a a clear solution for how we want to do, but that's that's where we will be able to provide a way of helping others bootstrap indexers. So all of this bulk data transfer, um, we're, term we're terming it a content advertisement mirror. So it's a specific type of mirror, a, a content advertisement type of mirror that is. And it's uh, in its current form, it's based on a collection of car files where each car file uh, represents an advertisement and that advertisement's associated multi-hash data. Um, so right now, the ability to read and write these car files is built into an in, uh, into our indexer implementation, but it could certainly become an independent service, uh, or we could just rely on uh, the availability of car files as the uh, as the means of interoperability. So, at, as we've talked about, the advertisement itself there there would be a chain of advertisements. This slide shows a single advertisement and its chain of multi-hash data chunks. Uh, so this uh, one advertisement and its associated data is what makes up one car file. So we'll have any number of car files that will represent an entire advertisement chain and all the associated data. Um, car files are compressed uh, and, and we follow some uh, standard naming conventions. So we could really just share a, um, a large repository of car files and that should be enough for, to be interoperable. Why a car file? Um, well, this provides a data level interoperability so that uh, different mirror implement implementations could operate on the same data. Um, that way we don't necessarily have to define a whole uh, data exchange protocol for mirroring. We just say, well, it's based on car files that follow a particular standard and a particular format. Um, so our, uh, our implementation is backed by S3, uh, but it could be backed by any file store. And that's another convenient thing about using the, the car files. It's very easy to uh, put these on uh, 
anything that can store files. Uh, so we have a, an S3 implement, uh, installation right now that has roughly two terabytes of compressed car data and it's and, and continues to grow. The uh, car file format is pretty simple. It is simply the uh, roots of the advertise uh, or the, the root CIDs are the first two things in the car file, uh, the advertisement CID. And if there is data associated with the advertisement, the uh, the initial CID of the um, of the first chunk of the data chain, and then uh, the block of advertisement data, and then any any following blocks of uh, multi hash data chunks. And uh, this is uh, this is all there is to the uh, the car file. It can be read very quickly. We use car v two, so you can use an index to get to any any piece of uh, data in there. Um, and this is a this is something that, that should be simple enough with our car utilities to uh, allow any any anyone to interoperate with our uh, with the data in our mirror. Um, we follow a naming convention uh, with the compressed car files. Uh, basically, the it's named for the CID of the advertisement that's in it. Um, but really, the, uh, the mirror will resolve the name. So if we had different mirror implementations that maybe split things into different directories by publisher, by provider, however, um, that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, the mirror can figure that out, but the car file itself, um, if once you have the car file and you know the format, then you can get that you can read the data in it. Um, so mirrors can be configured for reading, writing, or both. Uh, you can have a read-only mirror. Um, and this would be used when indexers uh, want to use a mirror, but uh, they are not updaters of that mirror. So in other words, you'd have a, a different updater that maybe you have one updater and a lot of readers of the mirror, or uh, you don't have any updaters and you just you start with a, with a static bulk data import somewhere, and then everyone reads the mirror to uh, get up to speed. A write-only mirror is where you might uh, have one indexer or a group of indexers uh, that are populating the mirror and all the rest are readers. Um, or where you aren't actually reading your mirror, you're just, you're just accumulating data in it because you aren't necessarily planning uh, on, on using it for anything other than when you want to start an installation or maybe you're sharing it with other parties. So you you have a write-only uh, mirror. And then a read-write would be where... Uh, well, obviously you're reading and writing, but you have maybe indexers that are both updating and possibly uh, reading from the mirror if other indexers may have already uh, indexed data. So this would be used in installation when you have some overlap. So you have multiple indexers that are responsible for ingesting data from the same uh, uh, from the same publishers. So you might do that for redundancy in an installation. So let's talk about the advertisement chain processing. Uh, so the advertisement chain, uh, the way that works is an indexer syncs the chain of advertisement uh, only, and then it goes for each advertisement and syncs the bulk data. And it's the bulk data where we get the huge amount of speed up. So mirroring, if you're gonna be an implementer of a mirror, the most important aspect of that is to be able to sync the bulk data. It almost doesn't matter if you sync just the advertisement mirrors, at least from, uh, sorry, sync just the advertisement chain from the mirror. In our testing, uh, a chain of a thousand ads typically is about 150 milliseconds. Uh, however, each ad syncing its bulk data uh, often takes multiple seconds per ad. So if I have an advertisement chain of a million <laughs> ads long, um, I can get that in, in uh, you know, seconds where and it doesn't really help to use a mirror, but then when I'm syncing each ad, being able to pull it from a mirror, I, I might be able to do 20 per second versus uh, uh, one every two seconds. So I'd like to show you a, a little demo of an, an actual uh, two indexers that are running, and I'm going to be syncing uh, both of them from uh, one from uh, the original publishers and one from the uh, a mirror that we have running in our S3. So let me go ahead and share that. All right, so let's go ahead and run the demo. I'm going to run this. The one on the left is the non-mirrored, and the one on the right is the mirrored. So 
hopefully the they're reasonably caught up. So we'll actually be reading from the mirror on one side. Uh, Andrew, can I ask you to make the font a little bit bigger? Yes, uh, let me go ahead and do that. And I just increase it with, huh, sorry, let's see. Uh. All right, so we can see the, the progress here. So I'm tailing from the logs. So it looks like uh, we, this one's, is it stopped? Yes, this one is done. So let's see what the time is. So one minute, 28 seconds. And that's about what I've seen running this demo before, minute to a minute 30. Um, and this one, let's see, is this, if this one is done yet? Usually this one takes a lot longer. Yeah, it looks like it may have finished quickly. All right. Um, well, that wasn't as quite as impressive as the first time I ran it when the second one took um, about five minutes. So, but I do want to did want to show that we are actually reading these from um, a an S three source. And if I look at the logs. We can actually see that we're reading these uh, from from our S3, and we can see that they're uh, they're car entries. So it did in fact read this from a mirror, um, but the uh, the finish time wasn't that wasn't that different this time. Anyway, so let me go back to the presentation. But I just, uh, at least we can see that that's working fine. All right, um, well, everything worked too well for the demo for both cases. So let's let's talk about uh, the things that we wanted to discuss. Now that I've uh, sort of gone over uh, the car mirrors, uh, what they what the car mirror is, how we use it, what it's beneficial for. Uh, the second half of this presentation, we wanted to be able to, to discuss where we go from here. So. I think probably now is a good time to um, either open up with some questions and then we can jump into the discussions. Um, I've organized these discussions. There's, a, a, I think, what, five of them in order of what I think what are most important to talk about. And we can either go through these or uh, just one, one at a time and then go back and discuss them, or we can uh, just we can uh, start discussing them now. Um, but in, in the meantime, I wanted to open it up if, if there's any questions so far about the indexer, because I kind of rushed through a lot of information there. So I'm sorry, yeah, the indexer's use of the car advertisement mirroring, excuse me. But so are there any, are there any questions? Um, you might have talked about the individual pieces of this, um, but just to put it all together, what in the event that you try to mirror um, a set of cars that it's no longer like in sync with the latest advertisement chain. Uh, what what happens yes. in that case? Well, what happens is uh, if you only mirror, if you're only reading from the cars, then you're going to get the older data that's no longer valid until you your indexer indexes newer data from the the publishers. So the way we normally do this is uh, when we're bootstrapping. Uh, you know, we'll use the car mirror to get up to speed, um, and uh, with with data that we're with data from an ad chain that's read from the uh, publisher. So let me let me back up and be more specific. So 
remember I talked about the ad chain itself not making a big difference, whether we sync it from the, the mirror or the publisher. So what we do is we get the initial ad chain from the publisher, so that, which doesn't take any more time at all. And then we start syncing the ads. If the ad is available from a mirror, and we, we go in chronological order from oldest to newest, um, and there's some optimizations, like we'll look for the any deleted content on that chain before we start syncing the individual ads so we can skip ads that don't have any more data. We also look for what is the latest uh, set of addresses. That way we don't push old addresses into our indexer. Uh, we look for uh, for data that would be updated. And then we start syncing the individual advertisements. So if, if the advertisement is still current, then we can grab it from the mirror. Um, otherwise, we, we can, can skip it because it will have been replaced by a later advertisement. So that way, we, we only read from the mirror valid data that we know we need. And that, and that allows us to um, not have to go back and, and edit a lot of information or, or, or put invalid data into our indexer. So yeah, we sync the, sync the chains from the publisher, sync the data from the mirror. And, then, and at the point we've, after we've, we've, the chains have been synced, we know what, what data we need from the mirror, which is current. And I just want to add something to what Andrew pointed out. So when we are processing advertisements, ignoring mirror completely, we still have to be tolerant of latency because what we see as latest is not exactly latest anyway. Right? So then the, the idea is whatever you think is the latest, you just get that processed advertisements and then later on, uh, when the newer things come along, then you just add this. The, the main thing to point out is that the protocol for processing information has to be uh, latency tolerant anyway, right? And, and that's like a different, more interesting, perhaps, uh, problem than just having the data in, in multiple places. Right. Yeah. We, we don't actually know um, if we're all, we're never, we're never completely up to date because as soon as we have information, the publishers may have published something that's more up to date. So we uh, are always catching up, but we do some optimizations, like we can tell if data has been deleted and then we know not to pull that data in. So for example, we read something later in the car file that says previous data has been removed. We know we don't need to load that data. I was going to ask if you could describe how this would be beneficial to uh, other people that are running their own indexer instances. Yes, this is the, this is in fact the slide that's right in front of you, all right here. Um, so that is something that uh, I want to you know talk about, and you know, how do we make this useful to other people? So initially, it would be very useful in a couple of ways. Firstly in order for somebody else to be able to bootstrap their indexer installation or if their installation if if they maybe aren't as caught up to uh to somewhere else so maybe uh, we have sid.contact which is always indexing everything and so it's it's probably pretty well caught up maybe somebody else's uh isn't or maybe they just don't want to read directly from the publishers because it's slower or they don't want to bur burden the publishers so they'd rather only read from a mirror and if we provide that mirror then that could be the, the alternate source of, of uh, data to ingest. So those are the ways it could be useful. So then the discussion uh, goes into, uh, well, how do we provide that? Um, and who pays for it? And you know, how do we, who updates it? Who, what are the policies? And so that's really the discussion. So that's like a perfect segue into this discussion. I want to talk about say public, public readable advertisement mirror. Let's say uh, at SID.contact, and we have a mirror, which is pretty well populated. We could give this, uh, we could open up access to the public, but how do we do that? Do we just share uh, a big S3 bucket? Do we add a, have a service on the, that's able to, uh, say, uh, re request certain car files or uh, certain data? Um, and what makes sense? Who who updates this? Is it just just us, or can anybody else who might be more ahead update it? Or can you, as a publisher, uh, it's another topic I want to discuss. Push your data directly into the mirror instead of publishing it on your, uh, you know, as a as a publisher normally would. And that's maybe maybe that's an alternative to publishing data. Um, so. So thoughts on on this? Uh, I don't have a proposal for uh, how to do this, but 
Uh, this is the kind of thing I want to make sure we at least understand what people want to do with this. So if we shared a big repository of car files um, as a read-only mirror, would that be something that would be useful to people? I guess one thing to point out is that the advertisement information itself is also content addressable data. Right? We are already building a lot of systems and distributed um, exchange mechanisms to exchange exactly that type of content. It just so happens that in this case, it is advertisements. So another way of thinking about it is, can we use the existing CDN mechanisms like Saturn, for example, uh, to serve uh, advertisements just like they serve other content? Right? And that comes with a nice, um, uh, nice uh, property that we don't need to make anything special for making only advertisements available because this is just car files we're talking about. And the other aspect that I see is uh, I don't think it is just the responsibility of the indexers to make this data replicated. Uh, it, it could be or perhaps it, it, it could be far more efficient or perhaps just works out much better if we build something on the provider side, built out protocols for them to then publish uh, uh, copies of their advertisements elsewhere because it's all signed anyway, uh, verifiable, uh, and then uh, convey the inf information to the indexers about where they can go get it. Right? So that, that's another angle. So uh, we talk about this mirroring, and of course, at the first stage, it's, it's much more usable or useful to the indexers themselves, but this is something that goes beyond indexers, in my opinion, and includes uh, providers themselves, right? From provider's perspective, it is in my benefit for my content to be discoverable. And I think we can leverage that to get providers to do a little bit more in terms of just distributing this information better such that it can be ingested faster and so on. What do you think, Andrew? I think that's uh, that actually wraps up a, a, um, a couple of the topics of discussion we wanted to talk about. So yeah, that's that's those are all very good points. Uh, let's, let's talk about the... Uh, couple of things that you mentioned there. So being able to provide a, a mirror as a way of publishing advertisements. Um, so yeah, content adver a content advertising publisher, uh, they could either create a mirror or they could uh, they could push content into a, a public mirror that uh, then that offloads the the need to serve all of that data themselves um, through uh, uh, you know, through the, the the normal advertisement protocol, they could say, "Hey, here's a mirror with all of the car files in it," and then use S3 or some sort of a CDN to serve those files directly. Or maybe it's uh, maybe if that because all those car files are are content addressable as well, the advertisements are content addressable. Those can be put on uh, any sort of a shared content addressable um, storage system or uh, dis distribution system. But I would mention that. Uh, part of the strength of using a mirror is that it concentrates the data. All this data has been spread out among different publishers. So the mirror concentrates it in one place and makes it quickly accessible. If you do something like, say, put uh, all of the advertisements or, you know, whether they're in car files or whatever, and in something like IPFS, well, then you sort of redistributed them. And now you're, now you're back to pulling individual car files from disparate locations and you sort of lose the, uh, the advantage of the mirror. Um, another thing that was mentioned it's, it's, that's related to publishing uh, to a mirror as an alternate way of publishing is using a mirror as a cache for the advertisement data. So one of the interesting things about this is if you think of all the index or installations as most of them are generally caught up, um, you know, maybe, you know, at least within some, some reasonable amount, uh, maybe they're, they're a day or a few days behind, maybe a week or two behind at most. If you were to have a, a mirror that serves as a cache for the more recent data, you don't have to keep everything in there. Just keep the, the last few weeks of published content uh, in a mirror, in a public mirror. And then all of the indexers can uh, use that mirror to see if the content is already there before they reach out to the individual publishers to try to pull that content out. And if that mirror is fast, um, it doesn't have to necessarily be huge uh, because it's only storing recently published data. So that's some that's another way that a mirror could be uh, very beneficial. And if we had uh, mirrors as caches, if if uh, 
if a, a protocol lab, say, provided uh, mirror uh, adver content advertised that mirrors its caches, anybody's indexer could pull from those caches first, and uh, that would could save a lot of work. Um, could take a lot of the burden of serving data from off of the publishers and provide an efficient way of of getting the data that most indexers would be asking for. Um, so that's so that's a, that is also um, another another possible way we could use it, and that would be something that uh, probably someone like PL will be interested in in providing, but it could also be provided by uh, individual publishers. Uh, a publisher could use that as a cache for their own data. Hey, don't don't pull this data directly from my advertisement service system. If it's an S3, go here, or, or it's in a CDN, or whatever, pull the these the the car files uh, for those ads from some other location that's that's less expensive and faster to, to serve them from. And then you get all the compressed data, and you get uh, all of the um, advantages of having everything all in one one place to quickly read it from. Um, so there's a lot of things we could do with the mirrors. Uh, those are a few of them. Um, but we want, but these are the questions we have to start answering, and and I don't know that we're going to have all the answers today, or or even even come up with all of the possible ways where we might want to use them. But I want to be able to start the discussions of how do we start using this? What do people need? We have a mirror right now, which is fairly well populated. Uh, we can start giving that to people who want to bring their indexers up to speed. Also, as people move to double hashed indexing, there's probably going to want to be uh, a lot of re-indexing done to uh, convert over to the new um, the new double hashed indexers, and in that conversion process, re-indexing is probably going to be a popular choice. So, uh, in order to lessen a lot of the pain of that, could we share our 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 mirror somehow? Uh, that would be, I think, figuring out how to do that uh, would would actually be very beneficial to not only PL but the uh, anyone who's running these indexers, of course. Um, so uh, do we, so we can, uh, we should probably collect uh, a number of ideas and we can discuss them in whatever form is appropriate for that. Uh, Andrew, yeah, you, we're ready you touched to... on something that resonated with me. Uh, and yes. that is uh, perhaps distinction between hot and cold data. Uh, so ah. I, I put myself in the shoes of somebody that is perhaps considering exposing one of these, right? Why should I do this? Mm -hmm. And, and how, how much is the total cost to me? Like this, these are the things that I would be interested in, right? So this distinction between hot and cold data could be useful to those audience as well, such that it provides some sort of uh, upper cap in terms of the total amount of information they store. And, and uh, they, they basically would periodically or like, uh, actively remove advertisements that are older than X duration. Right? Then the idea is that the way that the mirror would then evolve is it is much, much faster and much, much easier to find most recent advertisements, which are probably pointing, on, pointing to data that is more important. Not necessarily, but probably. And then mm -hmm. um, advertisements that are older are, are then harder to find. They have less replicas. You probably have to go to providers directly, that type of thing. What, what are your thoughts on that sort of interaction, where not all advertisements are equal, but, but some are more equal than others? I think that that is exactly what we're looking to do as far as a cache. And you know, who decides the, uh, the policy for... Uh, uh, cache expiration. Um, so it could be based on time. It could be based on how frequently something is used. Maybe something is very old, but it's uh, it's asked for. It, a lot of it. actually take it back. The indexers would would be able to you know at that point. It's really about getting this into the indexers. So it really only matters as far as how frequent or, or sorry how fresh the information is, not how frequent it is uh, is accessed or queried. So I so as far as the uh, the caching of, the, of hot data, I think that's exactly what we want. Um, you can keep uh, data that's been published recently, say a day, a week, whatever is a reasonable retention strategy. 
And that way uh, it's in a, in a mirror that it's easily accessible, takes most of the burden off the publishers by having a small portion of the data in, uh, in, a, in the mirror because most of the indexers are caught up enough where they're gonna be querying the same recently published data. And so as far as cold data is concerned, you could even have a, uh, you could have a, you know, mirrors that are, are staged in uh, for different time periods, or you could just say, hey, nothing, if it's not in the hot data mirror, then you go back to the original publishers and that's where you fetch, you fetch your cold data from. So, but yeah, you could have mirrors that have hot, warm and cool data. Uh, you could do it any way you wanted to. Um, and they could be, they could be set up appropriately for the amount of traffic uh, that you anticipate them getting. So the hot cache would, uh, would have the highest bandwidth and things like that, but maybe it wouldn't be very big, whereas something that was for older data would be slower, uh, but less expensive to store more data. I wonder if the, like having concrete senses of scales of these things does help us be a little bit more intentional in, in what we're aiming for, because like in an optimistic world, we've got what maybe order of a hundred full replicas of full indexers. Like this is like, we're, we're not expecting a world with thousands or, or tens of thousands of indexers. Like you, you want an indexer in your data center, and then you're going to have caches that, that are going back to those full indexer replicas as the thing that disseminates past that. So if you only have, you know, order of a hundred indexers, none of these caches are going to be that hot. Uh, there's just not that many indexers to like, to do that. But I think you're right that we've got two access patterns. One is the mostly caught up indexers syncing with each other on new content. That's going to keep happening. And so as a publisher publishes a new content, what's the right dissemination? so that it's not all hundred indexers go back to that publisher, but that they share amongst themselves. And then the other one is a new indexer comes online and wants to get all of history to replay it or, or otherwise to copy some other indexer. Um, and so that then, that's much rarer probably, um, but, but is much more data. And so that's the question of, do we keep a full, uh, a full car mirror of all of the active history um, or the other thing you could say is if there's multiple of these mirrored archives that we're using for the staying in sync thing, you might have them find some way to slice because you expect that that full history thing is a pretty big long-term, like, like that'll take a week, I think right now, right, is our expectation. Right. And so, okay, great. With mirrors, maybe we can make that take hours or a day. That would be better than a week, um, but but that I'm going to multiple data centers and multiple mirrors for different chunks of it is not going to be the difference. And so you could imagine all of these mirrors have the, the current one, but use some sort of stable hash to spread out that overall history of the full active set so that a new entity gets you know a, a fraction of it from the different mirrors um, if they need to replay everything. That, that you're not so much looking for like you know, a strategy of, you know, act like hot or, or used or time, you, you want to have diversity so that um, you're, you're lowering cost while still having some mirrored copy rather than going back to all the providers um, for anyone new starting up in those unlikely occasions. Um, yeah, that actually, uh, that is a reasonable way of, uh, a reasonable strategy and we don't have to have any particular you know, set of data in a mirror it's either you know if i there's either something in a mirror that, or or it's not and i can look in whatever mirrors are available to me um one thing i do want to avoid is an indexer uh an indexer is going to not want to have to sit and, and pull multiple mirrors for every advertisement and that's so if we're going to be pulling advertisements from a mirror, going and saying, okay, is it in this one? Is it in this one? Is it in this one? That's going to kill the performance. Uh, whereas what, if we can identify an entire advertisement chain is in a mirror, and then whatever advertisements from that chain will pull only from that one mirror or assume that they should be in there. Um, so that's something that we want to consider is, is not 
that is actually I trying to identify if a chain or some portion of a chain is in a mirror as opposed to for each advertisement trying n mirrors. So the access pattern that we see for indexing, generally the uh, publishers are announcing, uh, and for for the most part, you know we're seeing one to ten to twenty uh, advertisements uh, at a time that we're pulling in. So it's not particularly long chains. Uh, so it's, but it's still, you know, when we have a chain of them, uh, even having twenty advertisements, having to look in different. Uh, different mirrors for each one is going to sort of kill the whole reason to use a mirror. Um, yeah, that's commissioning on providers is seems reasonable. We're already doing that for the shards within a instance uh, or a, a full replica of an indexer is that it has different shards that are partitioned on provider. But you could imagine, in the same way that we're doing that, that the different indexer instances. So we run one, you know other entities run their full instance of an indexer. Um, mm -hmm. Those also can be partitioned in that same space so that you go to the mirror provided by that replica for a given provider uh, on your syncs. Yes. Um, and so it's essentially Absolutely. it's that shard then that, that that instance overall is sharing to the rest of the indexers. But you try one, you see if they've got the stuff you need for the providers in that shard, and otherwise you go back to the original providers. Um, it means that there's some correlated set of providers that uh, are going to get hit uh, if a shard goes down. But I think that's probably always true. And right, like it, yeah. if the mirror that's responsible for some set of content falls off, all the other indexers are going to need to go back to the provider for that as that heals. But that's fine. Yeah, and, and sharding by providers that actually works with what I, what I was saying before about looking for a whole ad chain because the ad chain is. At the time we process, by the time we process it, we've we we've isolated uh, the ad chain to a single provider. Uh, so by sharding the mirror by provider, we've already um, been able to uh, essentially correlate with a or associate a um, a a mirror a mirror shard with a provider, which there which then associated with with the whole chain. So that all works actually quite well. If what I said was clear, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure, but, but yeah, processing the ad chain, it, the the chain processing is all is for a single provider. So the the sharding, um, by provider is perfect. Um, and yeah, you'll have to heal if if a shard goes down. Yeah, you'll have to heal that shard, but you'd have to go. You you, um, you know, if the provider, you know, you've got to process that chain. Um, by going back to the original provider anyway, even if a piece of it was down. So even if a, a link in that chain was bad, you, then you'd have to, at that point, go back to the original provider to pick up that link. There's another uh, angle in mirroring that I can see, which is the information we are mirroring. Uh, they're not all, I mean, by, by information, I mean individual fills in the advertisement. They're not all having the same sort of importance. Uh, so what do I mean by that? For example, a provider's address and a metadata and extended families associated to an advertisement is probably a far more important piece of information to keep up to date compared to the list of multi hatches that they advertise. Why? Because that stops or makes the connection to actually fetch the CIDs. Right? So if I have two CIDs of total, but my address has changed. If the address gets updated you know, last, it means my CIDs, regardless of how many of them indexers know about, would become undiscoverable, unaccessible, unretrievable, apologies, until the, the indexer reaches the advertisement that indeed changed some metadata or introduced extended providers. Right? Uh, what are your thoughts on this yeah. uh, uneven importance of information advertisements? Oh, I, uh, thank you for asking. That's actually, I couldn't have paid a better shill in the audience to do so. Um, <laughs> the, the way we do the indexing specifically accounts for that by uh, reading the, by getting the latest advertisement, not from the mirror, 
but from the provider. Because remember, we think the chain from the provider, and then we think each advertisement from the mirror if the mirror data is there. So what that means is we get the latest that's available from the from the publisher. Uh, of that advertisement data. And, and then we use that latest address, latest, uh, uh, all of the latest information, uh, ephemeral information, addresses, extended providers, et cetera. And then as we pull in all the information from older ads in the chain, uh, we, uh, we have already updated our indexer with the latest ephemeral information. So all of the older versions of that get ignored. So, we don't, in fact, even need any of that to be in the mirror in its current form. Uh, we save the advertisement in the car file that is mirrored, but that's really as more of a historical record and a way of recomputing signatures or validating signatures on this data. We don't actually use the advertisement itself in the car file as is. So yeah, this ephemeral data is, all, is always retrieved from the publisher itself. Um, one of the things that we might want to do uh, when using mirroring, though, is it might be important to get whatever the latest advertisement in that mirror is, and then use that information uh, from the latest advertisement if you don't have something newer from the publisher. The mirror does currently keep a head file. A head file says uh, what the most recent car file is for any single uh, publisher. So whoever publishes an ad chain, uh, we were also recording the mirror what the head, uh, what you know, the latest ad in that whole chain is. So that way, if somebody didn't have a publisher, they could read from the mirror whatever the latest in it was in the mirror, and then get that ephemeral data from that latest advertisement in the chain. So we do have ways of dealing with that already. Indexer already deals with it by getting that from the publisher. You can. And you can deal with it in a mirror by looking at the head file, which we I didn't talk about, but we do maintain a head file. Andrew, what about a case where uh, extended providers are added somewhere in between, right? So like, imagine I added two extra protocols by which data could be uh, retrieved, and then I carry mm -hmm. on with the rest of the advertisements. And the, the advertisement that added these extended providers was at the chain level, which means it applies to all previous and uh, future advertisements, right? It, it won't be included. Does that does the thing that you describe covers that case too? Um, let's see. It, it certain. I'm trying to think if we cover extended provider information specifically with uh, if it's added in it. So if we take what the latest is, so I'm going to say that I don't think. As we're reading through, if the if the latest information is not the complete set, then no, we don't cover that. So that may be something. I guess where I'm getting at is there might be a need here for ingesting advertisements from head to tail and perhaps in parallel mm -hmm. head to tail and tail to head uh, where we are ingesting different things, right? Uh, the head to tail one could be ingesting uh, retrieval information and address updates, and that just gets the advertisement, obviously tries the mirror first and then reverse back to provider, but goes head to tail in order to keep the uh, latest state of how the data could be retrieved and where the data could be retrieved up to date, because that's fundamental mm -hmm. to the CID advertisement itself, right? And then you can mm -hmm. imagine another process in parallel that goes from tail to head, uh, or, or even head to tail again, that, that its job is to just ingest uh, CIDs and associate that to then associate that information to the this value key thing. What do you think? So on the head to tail traversal, you don't actually need to traverse. You only need the latest. Um, in the case of <clears throat> uh, in the case of having you know a, a most up to date set of information, for example, the addresses uh, with extended provider information. Um, that may be a little bit different if we're not if the latest extended provider information is not a uh, is not the complete set, but otherwise there really isn't a traversal from head to tail. It, it should just for any ephemeral data, the ephemeral data should just be read whatever the whatever is on the latest advertisement. Um, so as long as we know the latest advertisement, we we can just read the <clears throat> we can simply read the advertisement from that car file from the mirror or from the 
or whatever the latest one from the publisher is either way. And that's the ephemeral data that you know, the, the advertisement, uh, the, sorry, the, the latest version of that data that's advertised. And we just use that. So we, there, we don't have to traverse for that stuff. That's my, I don't, and I don't think we ever should have to traverse. If we ever have to traverse head to tail, to get something to get the most recent data, then I think we're doing it wrong. That should always be brought up to the head of the of the advertisement or extracted from the the chain that's that's been processed and put somewhere in the mirror that we can instantly read the latest version of. I think the the setup with um, extended providers is that we have this like override extended providers flag that's not always set, but is the um, basically says this is the extended provider that now should be set for um, anything where it's not explicitly set directly for that advertisement. Uh, I believe mm -hmm. in practice, the index provider sets that every time it starts up. Uh, also at the same time that it's changing like and re reconfirming what its current multi-adders and things like that are. Um, so we, we would get it, um, you know, fairly close to the chain. And in that sense, it is the most recent time you've seen that extended records be published. It's just that it's not necessarily in every advertisement. So it's not necessarily in the most recent advertisement. Um, but Got as it. soon as you see that, uh, that set as you walk backwards, that's the most recent one that overrides any previous ones that were set. So you only have to find one of them. Um, so it's, it, it's a bit of a traversal still, but we do republish it in practice pretty regularly. So we could probably get away with not doing much of a traversal. And we could also save that most recent one again with a car mirror or something, uh, rather than having to walk back an unknown amount of time to find that most recent one. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good point. Um, I, I think that for the mirror, what I would prefer to do, because even though you shouldn't have to walk back far, we don't know how far that is. I'd rather just extract the, the latest version if possible. Um, let's see, is that... Is that something that's possible? As we're writing the files, uh, we're always writing them in chronological order. So as soon as I encounter an, uh, a pro an extended provider information when I'm writing the mirror, I update the latest. So yeah, I think that would be the, the easiest thing. Let's just extract it just like we write the head file. Here's the most recent one. As soon as we encounter extended provider information, we'll just write the most recent and we'll update the most recent copy. See, I didn't realize that wasn't in all of the the ads. So if it's not, let uh, that that'll be. I will, I will make an issue for that right now, and uh, and then we'll we'll export that in the mirror. That way we can not have to traverse back when reading from the mirror. Um, That's reasonable. Only the the only other thing to think about there is I think the extended provider record is not directly signed itself. So, do we just trust? from our mirror read that that is indeed a correct thing, or we're gonna have to follow the chain and back to verify that indeed this is the most recent one. So the other thing that you could imagine doing is that we could be adding a pointer to the most recent extended records, yep. SID or something in every head so that you, exactly. you get the head object and that signed thing also includes it. Maybe that's worth doing. Um, like I, we've got I the ability to do. iterate on on some of that part of the protocol, and maybe that is something we do want to do in retrospect. I think we always need to have traceability back so you can redrive this, the signature. So if I have the latest extended provider's information, it should also just have a CID of the advertisement that it came from. So that way you could go back and load that original advertisement, either from a car file or even go back to the publisher and then verify the signature on that. So you you you'd compare the, the the data, make sure that was you know that's the correct data, and then uh, verify the advertisement signature. So yeah, we we should always be able to have traceability that allows you to recover a signature um, to or verify a signature. Um, so I will I will add that, but that doesn't actually affect the the indexer as it is because the indexer is always processing the chain from the provider it doesn't it doesn't get the ad chain itself from the mirror although it could uh it, that tends to not not be any faster and in some cases actually slower to read each individual car file to get the chain so it's better to get the, the chain from the publisher directly that's very very quick because that has a very small amount of data and that way we always have the latest uh extended provider information 
and we don't have to walk back along car files on a mirror. So I think that this isn't a high priority because it doesn't affect our indexers, but if somebody is strictly using a mirror, then uh, they probably want to get that data so that they can they can use it immediately as opposed to wait until their indexers caught up enough to see the latest. So I suppose, suppose that brings us to one more thing. I don't know if we want to talk about this here, uh, but there are uh, some uh, enhancements to the mirroring itself uh, that were suggested. Um, talking about keeping uh, chain metadata, and that would and that could include things like uh, latest advertise or sorry, latest uh, addresses, uh, latest con extended provider information. Um, there are some big downsides to having uh, metadata for a chain, mostly that every single time you uh, get a new link on that chain, a new advertisement, you have to update this metadata, and that metadata itself can grow very large, and most indexers may not actually even need that unless you're ingesting the chain, so how do you segment that metadata? Uh, so it becomes a complicated issue. We can talk about uh, some of those things, but one of the most useful parts of having this metadata is just being able to skip empty advertisements. And another proposed way of doing that is with a simple replacement of uh, empty car files, you replace them with a specialized uh, spanning file. And this would be a specialized car file that replaces the uh, the first, if as you know, traversing from head to tail, it will replace the first uh, advertisement that has no data and and then have a CID that links to the next advertisement that has data. That way it would allow the uh, traversal to completely bypass an entire um, an entire set of uh, car files in a um, from the mirror. Andrew, but, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, yes. I'm curious, th this sounds like a really great advantage, but simultaneously I'm wondering if the um, reader privacy, like uh, conflicts with this capability. Do you lose that in ability or does that interfere with once you have a um, encrypted uh, key value store, the ability to do these things? So no, that reader privacy, it's, it's a very different, it's, it's on, it's a completely different thing uh, because reader privacy really refers to asking the index, in other words, the, the client, the retrieval client, asking the indexer for something in a private way by giving it a, a hashed uh, key to look up. This is all on the ingestion side of the world. So this is the this is all for handling the data that's coming from the publishers before anything's in, uh, encrypted. Um, so before we do any double hashing of it, that is. Well, does it then negate the benefits of reader privacy? Because now there's a unrestricted or unencrypted. No, it doesn't because we don't know who's reading this. We, this is just who's ingesting this. We, we can see that, oh, here's all of the, well, it, it depends. I guess it depends how you look at reader privacy. If, if reader privacy, if you strictly mean we don't know who, uh, what a client is trying to read, then no, this doesn't affect it. Um, this does, uh, you know, the, having, let me say, a public car mirror uh, does a way to does provide a, a means to see what everybody is publishing, but you can always get that from the publisher anyway uh, if the publisher is public. So this doesn't affect that at all. It's, and then we can, as we ingest these things, we double hash it, and then the reader privacy is still uh, is still sound because we don't know what the readers are actually asking for because they submit a hash. I, I believe. I guess um, there's, there's a blanket of sort of security that, that we have been talking about on the reader privacy side, and that is, sure, you can contact every single provider and get the chain of advertisements and entries and, you know, double hash every single CID there, and then right there you have the master table for deciphering all reader privacy stuff, right? And the blanket of security that I'm talking about, and it's probably a thin one, uh, was that these providers are distributed. Uh, it will take you a long time to crawl the whole thing. Right? So what we are doing here is that we are making it just more expensive uh, to make sense of this uh, double hashed lookup. But then on the other hand, we are making it cheaper to get all the advertisements, right? So. Technically, we are making that blanket thinner, 
but nevertheless the cost still is present that if you wanted to make that master table of all double hashed CIDs that has ever been advertised by all providers, you still have to put some cash on the table to do it, right? Uh, but I, I do think that it makes it slightly easier because you now have much, much faster way of getting that raw data to then compile that table to then make sense of encrypted uh, intercommunication. Does that make sense? You're asking me, yes, sir. Um, absolutely. So does a mirror, yeah, does a, does a mirror really cheap, make that process a lot easier and cheaper? It makes it faster, but doesn't make it cheaper because you have to store the same amount of data to have this gigantic lookup or you have to search the same amount of data if you don't create a, you know, pre-create a table. So, yes, you could run your own indexer installation and, and, and via uh, a reader de-anonymizer and you know, deprivatizer. Awesome. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us remotely for a colorful discussion into uh, advertisement mirroring and what it means for um, uh, index providers as well as providers themselves. Are there any parting thoughts from you before we wrap it up? No, I just look forward to continuing the discussions on various forums and throughout the community. And hopefully this uh, presentation has been a good enough uh, bootstrap into the dis uh, in into some of the ideas behind the discussions we need to have to figure out how to make this most usable. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you so much.